Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Claire. A year and a half ago, I sold all my stuff to become a scuba instructor and now I'm just traveling the world. Right now I'm in the Philippines. And so this first video is going to be, this first video is gonna be a video about the first place that I went to is called Bohol. If you look at the Philippines, it's just a collection of islands and Bohol is more on the south side. Bohol was such a nice island. I highly recommend it to anyone who is wanting to go to the Philippines. It has a lot of very different and unique things to do. So I'm currently traveling with a friend that I met while working in Thailand. His name's Jordi. And then we're planning to meet up with two other people that we also met in Thailand. Their names are Yan and Danny. It just so happened that all of us were wanting to go to the Philippines after Thailand. So we're like, oh, let's just go together. So Danny and Yan are coming next week. So Jordi and I are exploring Bohol by ourselves. We didn't know much about Bohol before going into it. We had a few people recommend a few activities to do, but didn't really know much about the island itself or like where to stay, things like that. So we ended up staying like right in the city. It's like Taglabaran or I'm Tag Taglabaran? Tag um, and so we ended up just staying in the city there. It turns out there's like a teeny tiny little island, like right next, there's a bridge that connects like the main island of Bohol to this other tiny one. And this tiny one is called uh, Penglao. And that's typically where all of the tourists go. So there's a lot more touristy restaurants and that's where all the hotels are, things like that. And so we stayed in the city in a, in a small hotel. The rooms at the place we stayed were like, I think $10 a night, so it's not bad. We had four full days to explore Bohol, so we were, so we were trying to figure out when to do all of our activities. We rented a motorbike, which I highly recommend because Bohol is a lot bigger than it seems, and a lot of these fun things that you can do all over the island are really far apart. Like some of the things that we wanted to do took like an hour to get there. So I highly recommend if you go there to get a motorbike. So as some of you may know, I made the big girl purchase of a drone the other day while I was in Bangkok. Um, I purchased the DJI um, Mavic Mini 2 SE. And so bought it in Bangkok, flew to the Philippines, and then this in Bohol was going to be the first time that I was using it. So Jordi has a little bit more experience than I do flying drones, but not that much more. And so I was stressing quite hard when we were practicing. We went over to Penglao. They have really nice beaches. And so we just set up all the drone stuff on the beach and then we're just practicing. Obviously every video that we took, the, the, the frame is just like, like super jagged, not fluid at all. But that I guess just comes with practice. But I was so stressed because Jordy's like, oh, look at all these boats. This would be such a cool drone shot, which I agree with. I was like, yeah, it would be really, really cool if we could just go on top and then just like pan over all the boats. But I'm like, oh, the first flight of this drone being over the ocean. I don't know how I feel about that. Anyways, got over my fear-ish. In the moment, no, I was, I was panicking the whole time. I flew it first and I was very, very cautious. I would only fly it up like, like maybe 20 feet and I was like, all right, that, that seems great. That seems like far enough to me. And Jory's like, no, go, go, go. Send it out farther. Oh my gosh, I was stressing me out the whole time, thinking that it was gonna lose signal and then all of a sudden drop into the ocean the very first time we were flying it. Obviously the drone footage doesn't have any audio, so I'll put little closed captions on like what we were actually saying in the moment. So here is some of the video of our very first time flying my new drone. Oh 
getting some really cool shots and some frames were smooth enough for long enough that actually they turned out pretty good. The rest of the day we just spent touring around Peng Lao, eating at some restaurants and just kind of relaxing after our travel day. And then we did the same thing the next day. Uh, Jordi was just coming from Vietnam and I was coming from Thailand, so we were both quite tired. So we just decided to take the first two days kind of easy. On the third day is when we decided to do all of our activities. And so first we went up to see the tarsier monkeys, which these are small little monkeys like this big. And these are the ones with like the really, really big eyes, very disproportionately huge eyes for these small monkeys and they sleep during the day. And so there's this little sanctuary on Behold that you can drive up to. It was like 120 pesos to go inside and it really was just like a small loop. Like the, the loop took like 10 minutes and there's just there was about like seven monkeys that we saw throughout the loop. And they're all just like perched up on the little branch, grabbing the little branch, just taking a snooze. We did find a few that were awake and had their eyes open and Jordy got some pretty good shots of them. was a lot of fun but it was not exactly what I was expecting I was expecting like a big sanctuary where we actually have to go out and like hunt for these little monkeys and try and find them and stuff but it really was just a cement walkway with with workers right next to the monkeys which I understand because I think other people may try and like you know poke them or something or harass them so they have to have workers right next to all the monkeys but I guess I was expecting like a an, an experience in nature and these monkeys and no it was it was very it's it's definitely touristy but on our way up it was really pretty they had this man-made forest which was beautiful it was like a huge tree tunnel for a really long way after we saw the monkeys we continued on the road through the little mountains and our plan was to go to a waterfall I can't actually remember the name of the waterfall off the top of my head because it's a name that I can't pronounce so I'm just gonna put it on the screen here with the, the waterfall that we went to. So we're going down the other side of the mountain and these locals are on the road and they're like, hey, you guys wanna come check out the waterfall? So we're like, yeah, let's go. And so one of the guys just hops on his bike. He's like, follow me. And so we go up the road, go down this other dirt road and follow him. And we're just like, Oh, he's leading us to the waterfall. Oh, we don't really know. We didn't really get to actually talk to him. He was kind of just like on the bike and let's roll. Um, but yeah, it, it, his name was Jojo. He was so, so nice. And so we finally got to the waterfall. We walked all the way down these stairs. It was a long way to He was like, yeah, you guys can go cliff jumping in this waterfall. And so basically he was showing us how to climb up the side to get to the little cliff part, uh, where to jump off and was just really, really helpful. Uh, come on. Is it, is it on 360? 360. Okay, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. One. Okay. Two. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. One. Okay. Two. Three.
we took a few jumps into the water and we have the GoPro 360, which this is Jordy's camera. And this was the first time that I was using a 360 camera. And so the footage is not good because I have, I had no idea where to hold it, editing, my head looks distorted, you can see my hand. It was my first time using it, so I'm sure I'll get better, but we had a lot of fun jumping into the water. Um, then we decided to climb up the waterfall. I sometimes turn into a massive chicken, and this happened while we were climbing up the waterfall. So I didn't feel like I was putting my foot in a good place where I would get traction to keep going up. And so I was just like stuck there. On this on this rock, like unable to move, and Jordy is just filming. made it up and there was like this little pool that's you know took some Instagram videos and then it was time to go back down and again turn into a major chicken and could not get down because I was afraid I was gonna slide down the whole waterfall and hurt myself. And so Jojo came to the rescue and he climbed up and basically was telling me, he's like, hey, put this foot here, put this foot here, put this foot here, and helped me all the way down the waterfall as well. After the waterfall we were going to continue along the coast up to some caves but it would have taken like an hour and a half longer and there was rain coming and so we just decided to turn back around and head back home the next day was yet another relaxing day i was doing a lot of editing trying to get videos out and things like that so i was doing a lot of work on the computer and so then yeah that was basically it for our time in Bohol. because it was at the very beginning of our trip i think we were a little bit more and relaxed because we were kind of tired and just I don't know it always takes me just a little bit of time to get familiar and kind of comfortable with a place before I can really like get in and relax so I think I was experiencing a little bit of that a little bit of anxiety of being just in a whole new place but overall the whole was so fun some of the things that we didn't get around to doing was going to see the chocolate hills apparently this is like a really beautiful viewpoint where you can see all kinds of rolling hills across the whole but we didn't get to go do that um, also the caves that I was telling you about and also around the caves apparently there's um, very very nice white sand beaches with like crystal clear water but again because the weather was bad we didn't end up going there so next time if I do go back to the hole those will be first things to check off the list next we are headed to drum roll Malapasqua Malapasqua is a tiny tiny speck of an island right on the north side of an island called Cebu this island Malapasqua is known for diving with thresher sharks. Anyone who doesn't know what thresher sharks are, they are the coolest shark in my opinion. They have really really long tails that they use to hunt with. It's like a whip that they use over their back and they basically whip a school of fish and it stuns a couple of them and then they go around and just eat the ones that they stun. Super cool. Malapasqua is one of the very few places that you can consistently see thresher sharks. There's a little shoal that every morning they come up from like the deep and get cleaned by all these tiny little cleaner fish. So they just kind of 
go around in circles over all these tiny little cleaner reef fish you go and just like eat all the algae off them to clean them and then later in the day they go back down it's gonna be an early early morning because I think we have to get to the dive shop around 4 30 so it'll be totally worth it though so we're off there next and so I will keep you guys updated with how my time in Malapascua goes. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to my channel. You can then also visit my blog. It's www.adventuringwithclaire.com. I have a lot of tips and tricks for traveling there. And then you can also find me on Instagram and TikTok at Adventuring with Claire. Thank you guys so much again. I will see you next week.